Today I'm going to be talking about flexibility and the four-day working week. And I would like to start with a question. Why is work so important to us? Well, one of the first answers would be it gives us money. It is a means of subsistence. Also, that subsistence, and usually that amount of money we get every month, is associa associated with a certain social status. But more importantly, it is part of our identity. When we go, for example, to a dinner party, one of the first questions people ask when we are introducing ourselves to others has to do with, so what do you do for a living? And that answer that we give usually has a certain meaning for ourselves and for our position in society. Work is also very important for us as it provides us important social interactions. And we spend a lot of time at work, so the quality of those social interactions is really important to us. But if work is so important to us, why is there evidence that work, and especially working over time, is uh, making us ill? We have been uh, having some recent findings from the World Health Organization that say that in 10 years there was an increase of 13% in mental health issues worldwide. And that was only up until 2017. Now with the pandemic, it is expected that those numbers may have been much higher. Now thinking specifically about work and about mental health at work, we have been hearing a lot about burnout, and it's good that it's now recognized by the World Health Organization as indeed an important syndrome of chronic stress at work. What we have been witnessing is that burnout levels seem to have been increasing. And I'm showing you here some uh, results from uh, the Clinician of the Future study by Elsevier Health that surveyed healthcare professionals worldwide. And they found that uh, in, the, in the US, 47% of healthcare workers were thinking about leaving their jobs, leaving the profession by 2025. And the number uh, worldwide was 31%. So those numbers are really shocking, especially because we have an aging population. So if people that are working in healthcare leave their jobs, uh, at such a rate, this is very concerning. But now, this is not only in healthcare. We have actually been witnessing, especially in Europe and in the US, with the outbreak of the pandemic, there, were, there has been a, the so-called great resignation and a lot of people leaving their jobs voluntarily with unprecedented numbers, trying to find usually a better job, usually a more meaningful job. This is very much associated with the rethinking of what are, am I doing here? I want to find something new, something better that I enjoy. But thinking about burnout, I'm showing you here a map of Europe. It seems that it is something that goes beyond the individual. It may have to do with societies, it may be, be, have to do with how work is uh, addressed in societies. And we see that in Scandinavian countries, for example, in Northern European countries, uh, work practices tend to be more favorable to workers and the burnout levels are lower, uh, according to, to this study. So we were interested in thinking about the, the different elements of flexibility. I've been researching on those topics uh, and it was interesting for us to understand topics such as uh, hybrid work and remote work, which became more uh, outspread with the pandemic. But also we wanted to understand different ways of arranging work, and specifically uh, in the UK, there was a lot of debate about whether a four-day working week would be a feasible option for, uh, for us as a society. So we wanted to ask companies, and workers about different opinions regarding the four-day working week. So we conducted this study in 2019 and another wave of the study in 2021, where we surveyed 2,000 employees and 500 companies in the UK. 
uh, and the samples were representative of every sector. And what we found was that uh, there were actually costs associated with the four-day working week, obviously, and there were also gains and benefits from the four-day working week. And I worked together with economists, uh, specifically James T. Walker, and we have calculated the economic savings of implementing a four-day working week. So we asked companies that are already implementing it to some or all of their staff, where were the costs and where were the savings? And then we extrapolated those results for the same companies in the UK economy. And we found that in 2021, there were savings of 104 billion pounds. And that's 2.2% of the UK turnover. So those numbers are significant. So we were very interested in understanding, so if people are working less, how can companies be making more money? So we asked uh, companies to let us know. Companies actually mentioned that productivity was increasing with the, the introduction of the four-day week. And that productivity was associated with the fact that people became more effective in terms of tasks, specifically reducing the amount of meetings, needless meetings that they had, and also through the use of digitalization. Another aspect, and that was very, very crucial, in which they reported significant savings was with the number of people absent, so people taking sick leave. That number reduced dramatically. Another element had to do with the possibility of attracting and retaining staff. The 40 weeks is a, considered a perk at the moment, it's not a policy. So it is a perk that companies use, so it is more attractive for workers to be where the, uh, those practices exist, such as other flexibility measures, both to attract and to retain staff. And another element, but that one is also much, pretty much related with the use of remote work, uh, has to do with the reduction in CO2 emissions, because obviously there are works that cannot be done from re remotely. Now, we asked people also, so what would you do or what do you already do on your day off, on your third day? And we actually found that uh, most people, they largely said that they would spend more time with their friends and with their families. And that's not surprising. That's one of the key elements of work-life balance that we have been talking about. But also, we, we saw that a lot of people would be doing another activity. For example, they would be uh, enjoying more leisure time. And that is associated with the economic argument that a four-day working week would boost leisure activities. For example, uh, tourism, for example, cinemas, theaters. And that's also what happened when Henry Ford in the US implemented the five-day working week in the early 20th century. So, that third day off uh, is also associated, and a lot of people mention, that they would use that extra time to develop a personal project and sometimes even a side hustle. So basically, either a part-time job or a, a certain activity, writing a book, in, engaging in some entrepreneurial activity. So in that sense, there would be eventually some uh, advantages for the economy. And it's very interesting that this number changed dramatically from 2019 to 2021. People wanting more of that extra activity on the day off. But I wanted to also uh, highlight one a very interesting finding that, I, that, that we got. We did not only ask people about the four-day working week, we also asked them about other forms of flexibility. And what we found was that the majority of people really did like the four-day working week, but only if they could choose the day off, or if that day is a Monday or a Friday, so extension of the weekend. But if it is a day chosen by the employer, then people 
would prefer to work full-time hours, so 40 hours, instead of working 32 hours and with a 40 working week. So they would prefer to work flexibly those full-time hours from home or uh, you know, being able to work at nights on the weekends compared to having a third day imposed by the, um, by the employer. And we found that was very interesting because it highlights that it's not just about the time we spend at work, but that people want control over their lives. They want control over their time. And I think this is very important to say that uh, we need to think about the implementation of the four-day working week as something that needs to be tested. And this is why there, are, there have been so many pilots occurring nowadays regarding the four-day week. We have four-day week global. Uh, now we have the trials going on in the UK, 70 companies in included on those trials. And we have already uh, Australia and New Zealand engaged. And now Portugal, Spain and Belgium are also being uh, implementing their different routes of the four-day working week. Four-day week global is also operating now in the US and Canada to initiate those trials. Why do we need those trials? Because as good as our findings are about the implementation in the UK, with companies already doing it as a perk, we still need to understand different specificities about implementation in every sector. And we need to do it by trials in companies before we legislate, before we use it as a policy. One important thing as well is that the four-day working week cannot be implemented overnight. That would be catastrophic because let's say you, have, you own a restaurant and you have five employees. There's a legislation saying, now everybody will have a four-day working week. You need to recruit more. And if you don't have many funds available, then you're going to be in trouble. Your business may fail. So it cannot be done overnight. It needs to be something progressive. There could be some, we could follow some, perhaps the examples of Iceland, like reducing uh, partially the amount of hours worked per week. Uh, and that had ma major implications in terms of well-being and productivity. But then we should go and see and assess how it's going, doing something progressively. We also need to have the engagement of workers. Workers do not want to be perceived as lazy, otherwise they will not engage. So we need to have that engagement and the engagement of line managers. That is crucial. If you think that uh, if your boss believes that this is not such a good idea, people are less likely to, to want to take this op opportunity. Monitoring, monitoring through time. We need to see whether it's working or not in different sectors, in shift work, how it's working. And, f and fifth, we need to think about it in relation to other forms of flexibility, such as remote and hybrid work, because it's not going to be the same for every sector for every profession. And I would like to end with this final question that re re uh, refers back to the first question I started with. So if we are talking about working less, about flexibility, is work still so important to us? And I would say yes, absolutely. Work is still very important to us. It is still a very crucial part of our income, our status, our socialization, and also our identity. But we have been witnessing a much bigger in interest in mental health, and we have been more allowed to talk about it. The talks about neurodiversity in the workplace were something that we didn't talk 10 years ago. And we basically should be moving from this idea of homo economicus to the idea of homo integra, we are as a whole. Basically, people have value beyond work. Thank you.